that's uh, the place near there where they actually do the satanic masses uh, with uh, with all these priests, uh, the satanic sects, uh, they all gather in this uh, forest. Uh, and maybe one day, uh, if we are lucky enough, Alex, uh, we can spot them as uh, you did uh, with the Bohemian uh, Grove. And <laughs> of course, uh, if we are caught by these people, I think that we will really end up uh, badly <laughs> there will be no coming back because uh, uh, there is actually catholic priests that celebrate satanic masses and this is not us saying it is padre amort who is the chief exorcist of the vatican he has clearly stated that there is satanic sects operating in the vatican so yeah. i mean if the chief exorcist of the vatican says this uh, why can't we say that i hear you unbelievable uh Jim in Montana, you're on the air with Leo Zagami. Go ahead. Yes, Alex. Uh, say, I'm a preacher evangelist, and I'm 62 years old. And I was born and raised a Catholic, baptized at birth, and I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, a huge Catholic church. Uh, Catholic grade school and high school educated. I understand. You're, you were uh, Catholic. Go ahead. Yes, and I'm also a preacher evangelist. Now, what I'm wondering is, what happened to the name above all names, which is Adonai Yeshua Messiah? Yeshua is his name. Now, why are we using this name, Jesus? And why is the Catholic Church involved in pushing this garbage my entire life? No, I don't understand what's no, no, going no, no, on. No, I hear you, uh, and, and, and God bless you. You know, my feeling on this, and I'm not saying you're being a Pharisee. I understand your frustration. Languages change. Things happen. Uh, you know, the name Jesus is different in different languages. We all know who we're talking about. I don't think God hates us if we get it wrong. You're right. Yeshua, uh, you know, the name of God, you could say Jehovah. Uh, I am that I am. We all know who we're talking about. We all know the fruits of that God. We know the fruits of the devil. And the New World Order brings us bad fruit. God brings us prosperity. But the paradox is we get so much prosperity as Christians, we then become degenerate and decadent. I don't know how we transcend that paradox that God blesses us so much, Leo. God blesses us uh, and at the same time uh, is uh, testing us uh, every day. And of course, uh, having a Pope like this uh, is uh, testing uh, all of uh, the of everybody who thinks uh, of himself as a Christian. Because after saying certain things, uh, you can't really say that this Pope is actually a Christian. It's interesting uh, that uh, we are going through that passage uh, these days. A lot of people are mentioning that passage from the Bible in Acts 2.20 and Revelation 6.12. Uh, 12, which mentions this uh, uh, moon that becomes uh, blood in this particular period of time in which a great earthquake that could have been, of course, the one we just had in Chile. And maybe, so maybe this uh, is the event, the Pope openly saying Christ fell at the cross, total blasphemy. Maybe that's the big, maybe it is signaling some new horrid march into evil. Yeah. Maybe the people who actually for a long time talked about prophecies, they are completely right. <laughs> that, that's the truth. Yeah, maybe we're here. They just announced they're brain shipping the troops. That's in the mainstream that news. I mean, it's all. I, I want to do five more minutes with the other side. I know you got to go. Uh, I want to talk about the astrology and how they're into that and, and the Vatican Observatory that I stayed right next to uh, at a hotel while I was there in Rome at least two of the days because uh, I wanted to be able to oversee what was happening and, and try to investigate some areas. Uh, but uh, let's continue with the phone calls. It's just a very epic time to be alive. And even if you don't believe solar eclipses have important portents, the elites do, folks. That's why we're looking at it. Uh, you know, it's like saying that some South Islanders go out and headhunt on the full moon. Doesn't mean we believe in headhunting. It just means these people from their anthropology, their sociology, do this on full moons. And, well, the elite are into astrology as well and do weird stuff. Sherry in Texas, you're on the air. Thank you, Alex. Um, my question is about the fact that, that I don't think the Pope said that Christ was a failure. I think that's media spin that said that. No, I mean, I I mean hold, Christ, on, hold on, hold on. He, he said he bodily failed he he was, as a human. Yeah. He chose that. That's clear in the Bible. So it's saying he failed, but his message did something later. It is a twisting. But sorry, go ahead. I think Christ thought he was a failure because can you not agree, um, Mr. Sargoni, that um, in our humanity, like the Pope, like Christ said, our humanness, 
I mean, the Pope said about our humanness, that uh, in our humanity, it, it, we, we lack confidence. Our humanity is tim timorous. We have a hard time believing in ourselves. Christ is not us. Christ said to God, why have you forsaken me? He really thought he was a failure, and that's so human. In, but see, Christ no, that's when he's in the garden realizing he's about to get beat to death and tortured. And you're right, his flesh feels like he's been left alone, but then he guts up, he goes through it, and transcends it. Leo? But Alex, the, the Pope didn't only put the cross into question uh, in that passage. The cross There's is the victory. He, he, he actually said that the cross is only a vessel. I mean, saying that the cross is only a vessel, so is only a symbol, means destroying the whole of Christianity. I mean, the cross is the symbol of the sacrifice that you do with your own life, with your own belief, every day, every minute of the day. I mean, the cross is essential for a Christian. So I wouldn't put this into question at all. Well, man, I'm not attacking you. I'm going to pull the full transcript. He does say it in a twisted way, so I can see what you're saying, but I've, I've watched it like five times. I'm going to pull the full transcript back in here. Jakari Jackson, just, just so hot to talk about it. He's not taking a few days off. He's worked like 10 days straight. He's but coming Alex, in to co-host with Kit Daniels in the fourth hour to go over all this. But uh, Ann Leanne Alex, McAdoo, sorry, go ahead. There is even journalists here in Italy. I mean, I'm talking about some of the most specialized Catholic and Vaticanists that are saying the same thing as McAdoo said. So, I mean, it's not only him who says it. They're saying it also here in Italy, Vaticanists, the experts. So, You're saying folks are saying the same thing our reporters are saying? Absolutely, yes. I mean, Ma'am, I'm going to let you come back. This is just too important. We're going to go to Robert, Bob, Jay, Mick after that, then let our guests go, and then I'm going to continue with the news we haven't hit yet. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Spread the word. All right, here's the full quote out of the Washington Post of the Pope's full speech. The cross shows us a different way of measuring success. Ours is to plant the seeds God sees to the fruits of our labors. And if at times our efforts and works seem to fail and produce no fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. So that's stated with a twisted, deep meaning that really informed people would understand you could see a failure if you were there that day, but it created a great success. But he doesn't say that knowing to the unwashed masses, Christ failed at the cross which is the inversion of the entire of Christendom that the cross is the great victory. It is just over the top. He goes on, another danger comes when we become jealous of our free time, when we think that surrounding ourselves with worldly comforts will keep us and serve us better, and that's his attack for austerity. Yes, it's good to be poor in the service of the poor if that's what you choose, but it's also good to be successful and lift others up and have prosperity. I mean, I've read the Bible. The problem with this reasoning is it can be blunt the power of God's daily call to con conversion, to encounter with him. It just goes on with a bunch of socialist gobbledygook. And that's what Leo Zagami uh, was getting at. But, but look, he's calling for world government. He's calling for global carbon taxes that are a death sentence to many in the third world. I mean, this is the whole globalist project. And they had another pope step down to have him come take over. This is unprecedented. And never had there been a Jesuit pope because you weren't supposed to have a Jesuit pope because it was supposed to be the watchdog for the Catholic Church. Zagami, I want to take a few final calls with you. I appreciate all your time. But talk a, a little bit about the, the Jesuits founded by the you know, military officer uh, in Spain, in Portugal, Loyola, all of that. And... Because I have some Catholics email me, call me, and they go, who says you can't have a Jesuit pope? Well, why was there never one before? Then I want to get into the astrology and a few final phone calls. Well, there was never really a written rule, but it was an unsaid rule. A few years back, I remember in a forum of Jesuits, this question arise, and of course they said it's an unwritten rule, but we don't usually traditionally have a Jesuit pope. This was, uh, as I said, a few years back. It's interesting, I think, in all this uh, context, uh, the prophecies that were given by a nun called Anne Katerina Emmerich, uh, because uh, the prophecies of this nun, uh, I want to just mention a little passage to, to make you understand how accurate they are. I saw also the relationship between two popes. 
I saw how baleful will be the consequences of this false church. I saw it increases in size. Heretics of every kind came into the city of Rome. The local crazy grew lukewarm. I saw a great darkness. This was a nun that was almost made a saint by the Catholic Church and is a beata, which is an in-between stage when you are nearly getting to sainthood. So it's not the words of... That was a German uh, nun, right? Like 400 years ago? This, uh, this, well, she was basically born, I tell you the exact, uh, between, she was born in 1774 and she died in 1824. Huh. And uh, she was very important for her visions. The church saw her as very important. And she said, the church is in great danger. We must pray. Uh, you know, and, and she saw this. I mean, it's quite incredible that she saw the scenario of the two popes like we are having these days. I mean, it's, uh, it's shocking. Well, all I know is whether it's the universities or whether it's the, the Protestant church, all of it is now just promoting world government, promoting the end of the family. I mean, I've gone to family churches that were kind of mainline Methodists that now sound like a Soviet brainwashing camp. I mean, uh, I've gone to Baptist churches that sounded conservative that now sound liberal, uh, and they're just following their central directives, World Council of Churches, 501c3, government controlled. Uh, it is bad. I mean, it, and now... I know folks in those different psychology departments of universities, it's like, we're banning free speech. Whites are inherently evil. And this is white people saying this. Uh, uh, I mean, it is, it is, they are really making a totalitarian move to crush the West. Uh, a, do you agree with that? And then B, why does the elite want to crush the West, the source of their power? Well, because uh, the next source of the power has to be at a global level. So they don't care if they crush a specific culture because they want to promote their mondialist culture. So, uh, of course, they crushed the nationalism as well as they crush religious identity. If it's not, uh, of course, controlled by them in some way, if it's not part of their world. So just a thousand different babbling groups of morons fighting with each other with central government, central religion playing referee. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, now that we saw the Pope being the spiritual leader of this new world order and Obama being, uh, you know, we have on one side uh, the false prophet and Obama basically being the Antichrist of the situation. I'm not saying that he is the Antichrist. But it's an Antichrist spirit. It's a model of the great one to come. As the Bible says over and over again, there's waves building precursors test towards the final. But uh, the technology that we have uh, these days is not the one we had a few hundred years ago. So what these people are doing these days, uh, it's, it's incredible. And of course, uh, it's of much bigger proportions and reaches every single side of this planet. There is no way of escaping. So them, now we know? finally have the technology for everyone worldwide to see the beast in the same hour and to see the talking machine in Jerusalem and to see the miracles and to see all the things that are described that is pure science fiction then, now reality. Yes, and, uh, and there is also, as I mentioned in the, that documentary uh, we did in Rome, uh, the situation of Our Lady of Medjugorje that is creating uh, still a lot of problems within the Catholic Church. And now there is being uh, the mysterious death of a priest uh, recently in Medjugorje, and uh, people are starting to wonder if in some way this death is connected to the fact that the Vatican wants to uh, cast out the Medjugorje visions from their belief system because they are contrary to the, what the Vatican is doing these days. Sherry in Texas, you're on the air with uh, Leo Zagami. Go ahead. Yes, I'm still here. Um, I just think that uh, Christ, who is divine, um, became who we were in our humanity as well as as in his divineness to let us know that we can see and live beyond the worldly view the world is our way it reflects us all our lack of brotherhood from sea to shining sea is all reflected in the world but christ came to show us a new way and and i think there is something in the pope that i have to stand up for because he seems to be able to see beyond the worldly view and that's why a lot of his things seek, seem contra contradictory to what the world has always held from a religious standpoint from a christian standpoint like 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 homosexuality alex i don't want to get off on other subjects but was it not perhaps not homosexuality the translation but shouldn't that have been 
pedophilia, but there, that word wasn't available. Well, I mean, I think Christ, you know, was not there judging people, and, he, and, and folks could always repent. And, and so I hear what you're saying, and I appreciate your call. But, ma'am, what the Jesuits put out is pure Ford Foundation, globalism, liberation theology. They 